find out something that's beneficial to them. If someone tells you something that's going to help you, that can help the next person, spread the word. Let them know what's going on. Because uh, that's how things uh, get passed around. Because when we keep it to ourselves, it does no one any good but us. And that's no good. You got to let everyone else know what's going on so it can be a benefit to other veterans, yes. to other people who need that information. And, you know, we got so many organizations out there, so many different people with things that can help another vet, that can help another service member, that can help another person who served in the armed forces, that, you know, um, it would be of a great benefit and the more people who know about things the better it is and a lot of us get this information and we hold we on to it like it's gold and we won't let it go and that's being very selfish and you don't want to be that way you want to get that information out to everyone well i have some information that i'd like to share with all my veterans that are in a low uh low income category if you're receiving and this goes out to our veterans that are receiving Medicaid, or if you're receiving food stamps, SSI, Section 8, if you're in the low income category, you're entitled to a free cell phone. You just have to call 1-888-909-1860. Now, of course, you have to supply them with some sort of documentation that entitles you or put you in that category. So if you're getting some sort of uh, Medicaid, you have documentation that you're receiving Medicaid, that's enough. If you're receiving food stamps, bring that documentation. When you call that number, they'll tell you where to meet or at that location close to your living area. Or whatever it is, if you're getting SSI, you get a, document, a letter from SSI <coughs> stating, you know, your, uh, what you're receiving from them. So that'll be proof of documentation. But if you're in that low income category, they have the free cell phones. And I didn't know that they call them the Obama phone. I take great offense to that. Why is it the Obama phone? Why can't it just be a free cell phone? Well, you know what? It I don't know. Uh, a, lot, a lot of times, you know, when something's out there, it, it could be Obama phone because maybe it, it's because it's something that's for everyone. Something that could be, uh, you know, we take offense to a lot of things, but it, it could be just because, well, Obama's for everyone, and this you phone clean could up be really for nice. This is why I like working with Al. I tell you, he cleans that up very nicely. But again, if you're in that low income category, that the, uh, you'll be entitled to a free cell phone. The number you call is 1-888-909-1860. Let that person know that answers the phone that, you know, you're calling because you hear on the Al Young show that you can get a free cell phone. It's called the Obama phone for what, it, for what that means. And they'll ask you what credentials do you have that causes you to fit into this category, and you tell them. If you're getting Medicaid, food stamps, Section 8, uh, SSI, all those good things. So, yes, President Obama is truly out there to make sure everyone can reach out and touch. Now, I don't know much about the phone, what type of phone. I don't know. We don't get into that. I basically think as long as you can reach out and call for help or call to get some sort of assistance, what difference does it make what kind of phone? I mean, he's not going to give you an iPhone because if that's the case, everyone will be getting a free phone. Well, look at the bright side. I'm, I'm waiting for them to start giving out the Obama Lamborghini. And then <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so if you hear about that one, please call us up and let me know. Well, no, I'll just drive mine <laughs> over because if I hear about it, I will have gotten it first. Check. <laughs> But uh, listen, guys and girls, if you do uh, need that assistance, please call and uh, get the uh, you've got the information. Get it. And uh, that will help you. 
uh, there's always something out there for people if you just kind of look into uh, the programs that are out there. There's a lot of different programs, and sometimes, like I said, someone knows about something for you. And if you get the information, take it and share it with the next person. Yeah, because you might not be the veteran that needs it. Yes. But there's always, we've got a lot of veterans out there that are truly in need of help, whether it be shelter, food, phone. There's a, our veterans out there are really in need of help. So this is what we do on our show. We are there to provide information of whatever it is you might need to know. Give us a call. We And if we don't know the answer, Al, what do we do? We'll try and find it out for you. Right. Again, <coughs> you can call us here at the studio, 813-235-0644. Excuse me. And if you're a veteran who has some sort of assistance that you can give us, please call us up. Let us know, and we'll try and get your information out. Or you can come on and give that information out yourself to anyone that's uh, uh, interested in knowing what it is. Uh, matter of fact, uh, <clears throat> I did run into a gentleman that I talked to uh, uh, Saturday. Uh, they had a competition, an ROTC competition mm -hmm. between several different high schools. And, uh, <clears throat> well, I'm not going to brag, but I am very proud of the fact that uh, my kids' school won. They came in first place in the competition. Did you have which to was, give the coach anything? No, I didn't have to give them anything. I mean, I think they, my, no one in my kids' school uh, had anything to do with anything okay. other than showing up. And I, I just want everybody to know that... Um, Riverview High School won the competition. They came in first place. And, uh, you know. Yay, three <laughs> cheers for yeah. Riverview High. Uh, so I'm very happy that they did that. My, my poor little daughter stumped her uh, toe in one of the relays. And uh, so, but she's doing better now. And uh, they, they did real well. So I was very happy. But they, all the schools did real well. And I think maybe the uh, next time that uh, they have a competition, uh, we should go out there and um, put on. Uh I am not going to participate. Now, I'll go out and I'll give him, you know, I'll be the pom-pom mom. How about well, that? three cheers? Yay. Is that because your kid goes to a different school? Well, yes. Well, there, there's nothing wrong with that. You're, that might be the day that Riverview loses, and then that way you can <laughs> be happy for whatever school. But I'm just saying this one particular time, uh, Riverview did beat the other schools. I'm not going to start naming the other schools because I don't want anybody to start crying and, you know, feeling bad. So I'll just say that Riverview won, okay? Okay. And the other schools can stay anonymous. Uh, but maybe at a later date I'll bring up the names. Uh, but they know who they are. <laughs> <laughs> but I'd like to say uh, it was a great day, and uh, the kids really look. You know what? I got to tell you something. Uh, the kids in the ROTC programs, you know, they really make you very proud because those kids were sharp. I mean, they were super sharp. You had to see them. I mean, well, you didn't really invite bad. me to the show, so you wanted well, to see them Well, you know what? Uh, no, I didn't say anything. Uh, but uh, when we went there, we went about 9.15, and uh, that's when things really kind of got off. And... Uh, well, we were there to, gee, it must have been about, um, I think it was about 2 o'clock because then uh, after my daughter kind of hurt herself, then we went running off and we had to take her out. But uh, it was it was really it was great. Good. It was a wonderful day. It was really worth it. So uh, I'll say to the parents out there, if you ever get a chance and you hear about one of the competitions that they're having for the different schools for ROTC, go out there and uh, check it out. It's really great. Um, it's wonderful. The kids perform. And you get a chance to see just how well these kids uh, handle themselves. And it's a lot of work. Yeah, it, it is, is a it lot is. of work because and the all TC instructors, uh, those people, they they are really great. And I mean, when you see it, you, you know, it makes you think back when you were in, and uh, you know, you look at them, and it made me think back when I was going to uh, Hillsborough High School and I was in ROTC there, and uh, it was really great. Did you compete? 
Could you? Oh yeah, it? I was in the drill. I was in a. I was on the drill too. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, right. In fact, um, it helped me out when I got when I went into the but, army. Yeah. Oh yeah. gosh, yeah. Well, I didn't join. Army I was a squad things. leader. You know, I was a squad leader when I went into uh, the basic training. Mm -hmm. Then after that, I went to leadership school, mm -hmm. and after leadership school, I became a. Um, what was it? A, a platoon. Um, a platoon guide uh, okay. in um, AIT. Okay. And, uh, you know, I just, I really had it made. Well, you know, I always wanted to be out in front, so I carried the guide on. So all yeah. eyes on me. <laughs> yeah. Well, I just always like being in thing. charge. So uh, what I did was, it was great. But it, it all started from ROTC. If I was smart, I should have gone to college and just became an officer. Okay. So you can do that the next time around? Um. No, I think the next time around, uh, I think I'm think thinking about becoming like president or a senator or something. Okay. Well, good luck in your career, Al. Okay. Uh, until then, welcome back to Earth. <laughs> <laughs> welcome back to Earth. Come on back. Yeah. But it's always good to see. I mean, I saw Al's daughter uh, perform in an ROTC uh, competition. Really, really, I mean, they are so disciplined, and I really have to say, if a kid out there is not sure of what they want to do, the career path that they want to take, don't be afraid to join one of our uh, military branch of service. Um, whatever it is you're skilled at, they'll make you proficient, and, you know, it'll become official, and, you know, welcome to the service. Yeah, I always think it's good when they do uh, decide to go because they – they carry on the family tradition. And, you know, I, I, as I speak to a lot of the parents, uh, you would be surprised at how many generations have uh, gone mm -hmm. into the military and they just uh, carry on that family tradition. And you're saying to yourself, oh, my gosh, you know, uh, you know, they tell you about their grandparents and then their parents and their brothers and their uncles. And I'm saying, gee, what a family tradition. And, I mean, they're just so proud that they've had so many people in their family go into the military and then they continue on the family tradition. Well, maybe I need to start a recruiting business and start with my family because um, I'm the only female in the, in, the, in the family that's ever been in the service. And my one cousin that I had... Uh, he was in Vietnam, and he passed away. Mm -hmm. and Sorry to hear that. I, well, that's one thing. You know, <clears throat> we talk about death, and we really don't talk about death, but that's the only thing that every one of us will have to go. Yeah, well, that's we so true. We have to try. We, I mean, yeah, no one wants to shop in Walmart. Yeah. Not all of us. Some people prefer Publix. Some people prefer uh, Sweet Bay. Right. Well, we all have to. You don't have to prefer death. We all have to go through death. Yeah, well, that's true. So, I think you know, it's just a matter of when we go. I think everybody wants to be able to say. The, they want to be the last to go. Right. No, I don't want to be the last because then I have to see everybody go before me and then I'll be alone. Well, I think, you know, when it comes to it, it's not something that people want to talk about. So, but I'm just saying, uh, we tend not to ever really want to talk about that particular subject, but uh, and especially when it comes to the military or anything else, because most of the people who uh, die in the military are our young soldiers, and uh, we don't want to ever discuss that because it's painful. Yes, and you know, my heart goes out to the family of the, the younger generation that had, oh well, the young ones that have passed away in the military because they haven't, we say they haven't lived their life, but they gave the ultimate sacrifice for, for this country. country. So I am ever grateful for what they do, and I want to thank them for their services. But um, it's still, I mean, I've gone twice. And I don't know how many times you've gone. I've never. And well, see, you know, here's the funny thing. Um, my whole time in the service, I've never gone. Wow. And, you know, I used to say that, especially when Saudi, uh, the Saudi war started, I was always, oh, gosh, please don't call me. You know, I've been on standby about three times. I'm like, oh, no. Well, it wasn't long after when Iraq started, and it was like, okay, your number <laughs> was picked. And I was like, oh, no. But God has always brought me through that, and I'm thankful for that as well. But uh, let's not just ponder on the death. But no, but, but I think we're, we're, what we're, we're talking about here is basically people coming in and serving and going mm -hmm. and then, uh, 
they're giving the ultimate sacrifice. Um, I came in uh, at a time when they were sending everybody and his mother uh, to Vietnam. It just so happened that uh, I didn't go. Okay. You know, and th those things happen. It does. It does. And, you know, some people get on rotation repeatedly. Yes. And some people never get it. It just depends on your job, you know, title or your, not title, but your job, the demand of your job. And it's like any other job. If there's no demand for that job, then, you know, you don't have to. I think, uh, like anything, uh, there are those who go and there are those who don't go. And you don't know, you don't know why, but it just happens. And that's just the way it is. Some people join certain services and they don't go. And then some of us are in a service and we don't go. So I don't know. Well, pretty soon we'll all be home and then we don't have to worry about that. And I think that's the main thing that yeah, most the president, people look what at. What we have wants to make sure that, you know, we bring our troops home. And, you know, uh, it's about that time for Afghanistan to stand on their own two feet and, you know, do what they have to do to maintain you know, uh, the security of their country. So, but we are there. We're always, and that's one thing I love about this country. We're always running to someone's aid. Well, you know what? You have to kind of look at America. Um, we do that. That's sort of our job in the world. I mean, people will say, well, we, are, we need to do this. We need to do that. We need to do whatever. <laughs> but, uh, We've always done what we do now, and I guess for as long as we're America, we'll continue to do the same thing. Okay, so now that we've talked all about that, what else is going on? We have tax season. Also, uh, there's a lot of um, programs out there to help our veterans, so take advantage of that. You know, call your local VA to find out if you're entitled to get some free services. And I like to say, you know, when it says free, somebody's always saying Nothing in life is free. That's not true. If you fall into a certain category or a status of the, you know, well, there are free. Less. There are free programs out there. Uh, if you look online, you find free programs. Uh, I believe um, for uh, military personnel. Now, see, that's one something I have to check. Because I'm not going to make a commitment on that, but uh, in past years I've seen certain programs out there where it is. So I need to go ahead and check on that. Uh, I've always had one person do my taxes for the last 10, 15 years. So, uh, but uh, you need to check on him. <laughs> no, it's her actually. Okay, check on her. Uh, check on her. So um, she's always done them, uh, and you know. So, but there are programs out yes. there, and I think if you call up to, um, on the, any military base, they can always help you also. And uh, there are a lot of different things out there. So. You just have to be kind of proactive. Pro yes, but proactive. by next week we'll have some information for people that we can add, definitely say this is what you need to do. Well, um, like I said, I'm always taking advantage of anything that's out there that's free. F R E E. You know, I kind of wish I had fallen to the free cell phone uh, category, but not yet. I'm, you know. I but, just didn't well, we, we kind of talk too much on our phones. You know, we, we could never fall into anything free in my family. You know, well, we're we're, we're paying out the nose for our phones. Well, that's because you've got all them kids. <laughs> yeah. And they love to talk. And they love to text and I, I everything think, else. I, whatever happened to the walkie-talkies? Back in the days, that's what my parents got. My sister had one. I had one. She would call, you better come home. Mom oh, is on God. your way. I don't know what happened now there. Now we tell. Now you got the babies with the iPad, the iPod, the iPhone. I can't get it, you know. But anyway, we'd like to hear from our callers out there. Please call us up and let us know what you're thinking. 813-235-0644. Again, that number is 813-235-0644. Don't forget if you have any if you have a business and you are offering 
military discounts for whatever, you know, to all our branch of service or veterans discount. Call us up so that we can let the veterans out there know where they can go and support your business because you're supporting us veterans. And that's one thing that I like to do. I'm always going out, hi, how are you? Do you offer military discounts? And if you also have a business or an organization that you'd like to promote, uh, please let us know. And if you'd like to, come on board and talk about your business. Talk about what services you have to offer the veterans. We'll be glad to have you come and uh, tell us about it or tell the audience about it. And if you uh, feel you'd like to really come out and share whatever it is that uh, you'd like to share with the audience, please come on. Come on board and let us know what you've got to give. Well, at this time, we're going to take a station break. We'd love to hear from you. Give us a call again at 813-235-0644. Strong. 
strive to keep our nation strong. We honor family members who are left behind to carry on. May we never forget the prisoner of war, missing in action and killed in action. God bless our retired veterans, and God bless the USA.
strive to keep our nation strong. We honor family members who are left behind to carry on. May we never forget the prisoner of war, missing in action and killed in action. God bless our retired veterans and God bless the USA. Okay, and we're back. All right. So, listen, you know what? Um, for you guys who um, haven't done so, and if you're uh, in earshot, uh, Real Nelson, everybody is still running around with the one thing that is most important that a lot of guys and gals are not doing, and that's taking care of business. And taking care of business is putting in that claim. Now, this is something else I beat you across the head with. If you don't take care of action, you can't get anything done. Uh, the Tampa VA is there. The VA's in the area, which is in St. Petersburg. You know, you need to go and file your claims. And if you file claims and you weren't satisfied with the results, then you need to either go in and put in an appeal or you need to take some sort of action to make sure something has happened. And if you've gone and you just decided, oh, can't be bothered, that's not the course to take. You need to keep at these things. You need to make sure that you are taking care of you. You are your best course of action. If you don't take care of yourself, no one else is going to do it for you. you and also, Al, you just need to let our listeners know mm -hmm. that um, if you don't want to go to the VA to put in a claim, you can go to your local AMVAT, VFW cha uh, uh, chapter, American Legion, the DAV. Go to one of those local chapters and take your paperwork with you. Try to keep also a copy of all your medical records or whatever it is you're claiming, have some sort of paper trail on that uh, ailment. Because, you know, sometimes they just want to put you through the red tape. And the first question they ask is, well, what documentation do you have? Well, you know, like yesterday I met a young uh, a gentleman and he's a Vietnam vet, and he wants to put in a claim, but he does not have his DD-214. doesn't mean that he's not a vet. So, you know, we just have to work a little harder. Sometimes things are not just sitting on the shelf and say, okay, I need to get some oranges today, and there it is on the shelf. Sometimes you really have to climb the tree. First you have to find the tree, then you have to climb the tree to pick the orange. Yeah. get it so sometimes you, you might have to work a little harder but, but these are simple things all they need to do is order a DD-214 <laughs> you go to the VA you ask someone there and they order you a DD-214 yes and that's true okay. you can go they, to the VA and and if you don't want to go to the VA you can also write because they only yes. do it through written requests that you write the National Archives uh, uh, for military personnel, which is that one archive drive in St. Louis, Missouri, and you make sure that your name, your date of birth, the date you entered active duty, the reason that you need a copy, it burned but, the but I'm just saying, Yeah, but I'm just saying the, 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 the simplest way to do it is, hey, listen, hey, I can't find my DD-214, don't know where it is, uh, can you guys help me? And someone will help them. Um, we make excuses for a lot of things when things are so simple you know what i'm saying so it's not like you can't go and say hey i, I need help and someone won't help you uh that's all it takes a lot of time is just uh saying i need help uh, a lot of programs when people are homeless 
when they, they need assistance, all they have to do is find a place to go to and ask for the help. But a lot of times we don't even take out the time to do that. What we'll do is we'll just say, oh, you know what? There's no one to help me. There's no place I can go or I won't even bother. I'll just rough it. I'll go out here and I'll take whatever comes, but I won't kind of really go out there and find out what's available to me. You know what? We mentioned a few places. Yes. But there are tons of different organizations mm -hmm. out there yes. that will help people. There are all kind of people, but it's just a matter of getting to them. And sometimes, that's why I said other veterans can help uh, uh, vets also. So if we all kind of like pool our efforts, we can really help a lot of people out there because there are tons and tons and tons There's of a veterans. Lot of pro yes, there are a lot of programs out there for veterans. And if it, you don't take advantage of it, you're just going to lose it. It just sits there. And, and there's all types of organizations that, I mean, you know, vet organizations, uh, aside from the ones that are so obvious. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, what is it, like uh, 73 different organizations almost. Oh, yes. Few more. Oh, gosh, I and, can't begin you know, to name yeah, them all. Uh, I'm, I wish we had that list uh, that would be out there to help these people. Um, so... Guys and girls, there are all kind of organizations out there to help you. Uh, it's just a matter of getting to them. Do you know what I've learned over the past week, Al? That I, if you were in the military, and let's say your profession was a mechanic, mm -hmm. and you no longer can work as a mechanic because of whatever issues you might have had that prevents you from now working as a mechanic. Let's say you enjoy cooking. Do you know the VA, the Veterans Department, will uh, uh, financially uh, pay for your schooling to go to become a uh, to go to the culinary arts school? I mean, that's I mean that's a fantastic opportunity and that's just one program that I'm mentioning but I mean there's programs out there they really really try to take care of you but if you don't take care of yourself because you are like Al said your best advocate if you don't take care of yourself then no one else can help you we can't take care of you we can't help you if you need help call out reach out go to your VA go to one of these local chapters they are there to help You've got the AMVET, and, and I think in every city they have all of these uh, 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 organizations that are willing to help veterans, that want to help veterans, that are telling you, come, let us help you. But we can't go out and find you. I belong to the DAV, and I kid you not, I tell everybody, and I help anyone. You don't have to belong to that chapter to help them. No. But um, if you need help, go into that chapter. I'm a veteran. I need help. And tell them what the problem is. And if they can't help you, I am quite sure they will send you in the right direction to seek help. But if you don't go in and ask or if you don't reach out, it's just no way possible they'll know that you need that help. Well, that that's the other reason um, I'm asking a lot of the veterans out there. When you see a vet, you know, just don't assume that, oh, they'll get help. Uh, mm -hmm. Try to help them. Go up to them if you can and uh, give them some assistance if you know of a program and if you think that you could be of, of help to them. Because a lot of them are not going to make any moves. Uh, a lot of them just feel, eh, and that feeling of, eh, doesn't go very far. And for the next X amount of years, they'll be going, ah. Eh, and nothing I have. Well, you know what happens also. A lot of our veterans might have been turned down before. And they think, well, I, I, I put in a claim before and I didn't get uh, compensated, so I'm not going to bother. That's not the attitude to take. Because throughout time, as you grow older, things start to react differently. Oh, yeah. You know, okay. tell me about it. You yes. know, if, you were, if you've been running all your and, and every branch of service you had to run, maybe not run as much as the Army because we ran for a living. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> you know, don't don't say that to a guy in the Marine Corps, you know, because they're going to say, hey, we, we did the same thing, if not better. I, I just, you know, but I'm just saying for whatever branch of service you were in, except uh, unless you were in one of those branches where they said, well, we didn't have to do that. Uh, their whole thing is... Um, we didn't have to do that. Yeah. But if you had to stay physically fit, fit. to do any particular uh, job, it was, well, okay, I did it, I did it, I did it, and now uh, things have changed. Right, because as we get older, you know, yeah, the bones no longer yes. work the way they used to work. It's like having a pot that you cook in, and you've had this pot for years. Well, after cooking in the pot and washing the pot and cooking in the pot and washing the pot, it starts to wear and tear. Well, it's the same thing. You go into the Army, you go into the military, and you go in 100%, and, you know, throughout time, after time, you know, you put your body through this rigorous uh, uh exercise and you know training the body starts to wear and tear and that's just with anything i kept thinking i was looking like superman all the time and my wife just told me uh, i don't think so <laughs> <That's what laughs> she said more like the joker <laughs> I got to love Karen because she has a sense of humor to be married to Al. But in all reality, we just want you to stop by one of these local chapters if you're in the area, if it's close by you, if it's close to home, and find out if you have not put in a claim and you have some issues, stop by one of these local chapters that be the AMVET, the VFW, the American Legion, the DAV. There's so many. Stop by and find out. How can I get help? What can you do to guide me in the right direction so that I can start to take care of myself? Because it's all about taking care of self. It is. And uh, you, you'll find out that guys, girls, uh, you find out that you got to take care of yourself. Again, you're your biggest advocate for your own well-being. And don't forget, you have to. I can't stress how important it is to have a paper trail. Do not depend on the VA to have all your medical documentations because something, what can go wrong, will go wrong. But, you know, if you have a copy and something went wrong with the VA, then you can supply them, and you never, ever give up your original. I met someone yesterday who wanted me to take his original well, document, and I said, no, I'll take a copy. So I make a copy, but you are your own keeper. Well, you, there is one something that you do have to kind of look at. For the guy who has nothing, who has no paperwork, who basically has no trail of nothing, uh, There's still hope. Yes, There's because still hope. you go to the VA, you yeah. can you you let them know what your problems are. Doesn't mean because you the, having your paperwork just makes it a little easier. Remember? Well, that you know what? But but yeah, not, not not to really cut you off. But listen, for well, you those do yeah, I do. But <laughs> for for those guys who are getting out of the service, uh, for those guys who are guys who love keeping their own papers and everything else listen you have just made all of the things that you do that much easier you have gone from zero to hero because you always <laughs> keep everything and the minute you walk through anybody's door you got everything yes so you don't have any problems and for all our tech savvy you guys know? and girls out there yeah. put your medical records on a disc put yes on a th i don't know if it'll fit on a thumb drive but i mean you know have a copy yes I, i'm still old school so you come in my i have an office and one section of my office is just for military papers and oh my god i i think i can make trees with the amount of papers well I you have. know but but see that's the way to go i mean when you walk into anybody's office or when you go to the va if you're filing a, a claim and you've got all your paperwork and whatever now listen now the v it's no longer kind of like in days of old when they didn't have computers and they couldn't get a hold of records and everything else uh and then you were lost now it still takes a while to get a lot of things and to process things but it's not like they can't find things now trust me i don't trust anybody with everything but at the same time i do have a certain degree of confidence that if i go there uh there are things that they will find now um when they had that big fire in St. Louis or yes. whatever it is. Now, there's a lot of things that got lost for people that um, 
who got out at a particular time mm-hmm. and who had records at a particular time that, hey, listen, those things got lost. So now if you were in that era, then your things got messed up and they may not be able to find a whole lot of things. So you got a problem. Um, not really. Now, when I say you got a problem, mm-hmm. now everything that you are looking for may not be mm-hmm. available. Yes. Because if it got burnt and uh, or destroyed, then yeah, you can't get to it. But I mean, they'll probably find a way of getting ninety nine point nine percent of it. Oh, yeah. But now, for the guy who's just getting out, or the female who's getting out, uh, you know, if you walk into any place and you've got everything, it's like when you go for a job. If your resume is dress right dress then, uh, hey, that, you're the guy that we're, we're looking, looking for. for. <laughs> if your resume is, you know, incomplete, then you, you've you got a problem. No, he just goes to the bottom of the pile. Yeah, well, that's <laughs> what I'm saying. So it's the same thing at the VA. Uh, if there's things that's missing, then it's going to take longer to get you uh, straightened out. That's all. Because then they've got to look up a lot of things, but everything's there. But still, I make. say to our veterans, please don't get discouraged. If you don't have it, doesn't mean that you cannot file a claim. It just means that we have to work a little harder. Okay. But, uh, you know, and there are ways to go around things. Mm-hmm. Once you have that VA card or you have ever been to the VA before, don't think that they don't have any, everything or anything on you. Sure they do because now everything is so technologically savvy that they're putting, they're compi- compiling everything and they're, Keeping better a uh, uh, better hold on you know our information now I, I mean now when you are you, you go to a sick call overseas or anything everything is computerized now so it all goes into like one database and they can just punch in your social and like magic it appears so they're trying they're trying their best to cut down on paper but at the same time they're trying to compile all your medical documentation into one database but it's still it's it's very important that you get a paper copy of what it is that they're asking or you you got treated for and therefore you have your own record keeping look at it this way uh everything is electronic basically there's still a lot of paperwork everything is electronic if you have trouble with your bank then there's always the chance that something's going to go wrong with something at the VA or something wrong with the medical facility that you visited while you were in the military. So it's always good to have backup. And that's all this is. It's the redundancy of records. So the more you have, the better off you are. And then when you no longer need them, once the VA's got everything, then you're in good shape. Yes. But you can count on the VA quite a bit. And, you know, a lot of us say, ah, the VA this, the VA that. But, you know, let's put it this way. Uh, I'm not trying to sell the VA as whatever, whatever, whatever. But you know what? It's the best thing we got going. And it's you compare it uh against any of the other hospitals out there, and you'll find out something. Uh, It's just as good as any other hospital. And, you know, I'm not, because listen, the VA doesn't do anything for me other than it does for the next guy. You know, it's not putting anything in my pocket. It's not doing, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, they don't pay us for anything. (laughs) And, you know, but I'm just saying for veterans, that's your meal ticket in the sense of your medical care, and you need to take advantage of it. And that's the only thing that it does for me as it takes care of me. And I've had my major operations with them, and I've had all kind of other care with them, and I know just how well they are. Now, no hospital or no organization is perfect. So you're not going to be able to say it's the best thing in the whole world. No. 
for some people it is. For some people it isn't. Well, thank God. I mean, I have to say, Al, since we're here in the Tampa Bay area, uh, James A. Haley has really, really been the best in the Tampa Bay area. So we have to take advantage of what we have. But while we would love to give you more information, stay tuned as we return next week. And we'll have more information for you. Veterans, please, I ask that you remember that March is quickly on your back door so that you should have all your ducks in a row because you will no longer be receiving a paper check. So start looking for a finan financial institution that will better serve you. And veterans, there are programs out there. I know it's income tax time. You don't have to pay for it if you can find the, pro the organization that's giving or uh, preparing your taxes for free. Uh, stay tuned. It's been great. Al, as usual, I love working with you. But until next week, we'll tell you more about what services are out there for our veterans. Well, hey, that's what we're here for. And that's what we're going to continue to do. And uh, hopefully we can uh, keep doing it and we'll expand. I'm going to try to get somebody from the VA here. Uh, if not next week, hopefully the week after, to explain some more of their programs, and uh, we'll see how that goes. Until then, get out there. have a great week. Okay. We're out.